Get Rich Education is brought to you by Ridge Lending Group, Apartment Investor Mastery, and Producers Wealth. You're listening to the show that has created more passive income for people than nearly any show in the world. This is the powerful Get Rich Education. Welcome to GRE, Get Rich Education, episode 183, from St. Petersburg, Russia to St. Petersburg, Florida, and across 188 nations worldwide, this is Get Rich Education. I'm Keith Weinhold, back to help you build your wealth, and today we're building your wealth and building your life at the same time. Now, we've discussed how real estate investing begins with you. What do you want it to do for you? The production of cash flow is a common answer, and it's still number one for me, quite frankly. But what if there were an asset that could provide you with both stable cash flows and you could also own this property in a place where you might get peaceable enjoyment of the premises a few weeks a year yourself at the same time? And that's what we're talking about today. Now, if you've got a vacancy in your Baltimore income property, Baltimore is nice, but it's quite unlikely that you would want to vacation there and fill the vacancy yourself for a couple weeks, since a holistic definition of wealth is not just money, and it's really the entirety of your life's different components, like we talked about here with Chris Martinson recently, you can't just stick wealth in a 401k and defer it all until you're 60 or 70. But now, there are some things that you do want to avoid with real estate investing for lifestyle. One that quickly comes to mind is a timeshare. A lot of times, timeshare participants, they don't actually own a real tangible asset. They pay a high management fee. And then worse, they rarely see the value of their investment tied to the actual value of the underlying property. Now, when you think about vacation home ownership, you might also wonder if you can afford it. And then you think about the maintenance hassles. Some vacation homeowners, even they kind of fall into this trap where they did not think about the team before the property, especially with the management. So they end up self-managing from tailoring VRBO listings to testing a water well. And soon that owner might not even want to visit their own vacation property, but they feel like they need to visit just to keep up with the upkeep. So you probably don't really want to be the one marketing, maintaining, or managing a lifestyle or vacation property yourself, but yet you want to be sure that it has good marketing and high rental occupancy during that majority of the year that you're not using it. It comes back to your return on time invested and also asking yourself a great question like, what's my return on life? What's the return on life that I'm deriving from my real estate portfolio. Now, as you know, I love to travel. One of my degrees is in geography after all. And you know that I've done the show from various Latin American nations. While I've been both touring and seeking investment opportunity in them, Panama, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Belize. And I'd like to think that I have somewhat of a bigger picture view of various opportunities in the world than some others do. Now, one nation that I visit rather frequently because it has this rare combination of natural beauty, rule of law, friendliness of its people, and its investment opportunity is the Central American nation of Belize, which is as short as a two-hour flight from southernmost U.S. cities and four or five hours from much of the U.S., and it's the only English-speaking nation in Central America. Belize's east coast is all Caribbean Sea. And pretty much the entire nation has a tropical climate. In fact, I first purchased real estate in Belize myself more than five years ago, and I made another trip there this past winter. And I've just got to tell you more about a great opportunity there. You know, sometimes broad thinking people like you have got to ask yourself a question that a lot of people were asking themselves in the throes of the Great Recession of 2009. What is the risk of only investing in the one country I'm most familiar with, like the United States only or Canada only? Now, I've visited different parts of Belize from north to south, and Belize is a New Jersey-sized nation. 
Yet, astoundingly, it only has 400,000 people in the entire nation. That's less than one twentieth the population of New Jersey. Yes, in the whole nation. In fact, Belize has the lowest population density in all of Central America, and it is ripe for development, and more people are finding out about Belize. In fact, its population is now growing at almost 2%. Every year, that's one of the highest growth rates in the entire Western Hemisphere. Belize has had its independence from Britain since 1981. In fact, it was known as British Honduras until that time. And Belize is both stable and forward-thinking. Government officials are supportive of development, all the way down to the fact that Americans and Canadians that own property in Belize have the exact same property ownership rights that Belizean citizens do. Over one-third of Belize has been set aside with wilderness protection designation. That's even substantially more proportionally than eco-friendly Costa Rica has. On the Belizean mainland, you have wilderness and you have Mayan ruins, caves, jaguars, monkeys, scarlet macaws, and it still has a low deforestation rate. Now, offshore, Belize has a bunch of islands which are known as Keys in Belize, C-A-Y-E-S. And there's the Great Barrier Reef, the second largest in the world. And my wife and I have had some of the best snorkeling of our entire lives there. And it's also great for fly fishing and diving on the Great Belize Barrier Reef. Now, let's talk more about trends and indicators of new development. Okay, do people want to move to a place? And are those people the right demographic? Are there highways and airports and other key pieces of infrastructure to support a growing population? When everything checks out, big organizations are the ones that begin the process of moving in to get ahead of the growth. Now, in residential development back in the U.S., savvy real estate investors watch these moves and then they start to investigate. It's kind of a way to piggyback on the hard work paid for by big players, big corporations, big companies. And some of the data they analyze include migration trends, infrastructure plans, and demographics. Now, for those interested in resort property investing, the principle is the same, but the players are sort of different. Okay, the migration patterns, they're not gleaned from U-Haul or rider truck statistics like you would with residential, but instead they're gleaned from airlines. So When you see every major airline, United, American, Southwest, the whole bunch, rapidly adding flights year over year from the U.S. to Belize, it's in response to growing demand. That's a strong indicator right there. Hilton just moved into Belize last year. That's the first international hotel chain in the entire nation. They know that tourists and occupancy are there or they soon will be. When those things are happening all at the same time in the same market, something has got to be happening to attract this attention. And it is that both relocation to and tourism to Belize continues to boom. It's been up an astounding 13% year over year, and major players are making moves to take advantage of Belize's growing popularity. Now, there are a lot of famous, I guess, real estate quotes and quotables out there from Benjamin Franklin to Will Rogers, but it was Cherokee Nation leader William Penn Adair that said simply, Find out where people are going and buy land before they get there. You can buy resort property as an investment for appreciation and income and still enjoy some personal use yourself. The timing's maybe never been better because now tens of thousands of baby boomers in the U.S. are retiring every single day. And studies say that they increasingly want to travel or retire abroad. Now, within Belize, I've identified a particularly good region for real estate investment. It's in Placencia, a small coastal community on a peninsula in southern Belize that's growing extremely fast. And I love Placencia for its location and recreation. Another reason I like Placencia, Belize, is that that's where I discovered and have gotten to know a world-class builder that does world-class development both on the Placencia mainland and on its nearby keys. His name is David Keener. David has an amazing name in the builder industry and a very long proven track record. In fact, when HGTV's popular television show Island Hunters, I love that show, when they came to Belize, 
they wanted to feature David's properties on the show, and they did. One of those properties David and his company built is known as the world's most private island. It's called Gladden Key, and it was featured on HGTV, and sorry, that one's already sold. Let's meet David Keener. He's in Dallas, Texas today, and talk about how you can invest for both cash flow and lifestyle in and around Placencia, Belize. Today's guest has over 25 years of successful business and real estate experience. He's a longtime successful developer of large single-family projects in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and a native Texan. He first visited Placencia, Belize way back in 2001, and since then he's been making ever-increasing buys and development of unique properties in the select emerging destination market of Belize. His celebrated work as a developer in Belize has been featured on HGTV's Island Hunters. Welcome to Get Rich Education, David Keener. Keith, thank you very much for having me. It's a very much a pleasure and uh, look forward to sitting down with you today and telling you about what I've learned over the last 15 years down in Belize. It's good to host you here, but probably not as good as it was for me when you hosted me down in Belize. So tell us why Belize, first of all. Well, it's a great question. You know, we things kind of just uh, happen for reasons you don't understand. But a, a good developer, fellow developer friend of mine here in Texas, uh, went down to Belize on a fly fishing trip back in 1999 and came back just talking, you know, crazy about how good it was and unspoiled. And he ended up moving down there and opening a resort. And he invited me to come to their grand opening in 2001. And I guess I kind of you know, came down expecting to have a good fishing trip and got hooked and saw a lot of opportunity that we've been slowly watching. And then over the last 10 years, investing more heavily and kind of coming with the curve of what was happening there and and getting our business up to where it is today. Yeah, well, Belize has better proximity to the United States than most people think. It's a two hour flight from Miami and Dallas. It's got government and currency stability there. For example, the Belize dollar does not float against the U.S. dollar. It is pegged, fixed at a two-to-one exchange rate. You have that rule of law in Belize. You do have, like you said, the fact that it's an English-speaking country in Central America. And, you know, importantly for real estate, Americans have the same property ownership rights as a Belizean. So within Belize, Placencia is at the end of this long peninsula that juts into the Caribbean Sea in southern Belize. So just tell us more about within Belize, why Placencia? Belize is uh, known for the Barrier Reef, obviously, being the second biggest in the world, a world heritage site. Placencia is located on the, the southern part of the country, which is still right in the middle of the reef. San Pedro is kind of the older, number one, biggest destination in Belize, up in northern Belize. Right. But it's an island. And so, again, Placencia is a peninsula. And that was what I liked about it is that you can drive your car, you know, down from the airport if you want to. You can drive now that the road was paid, probably going on six years ago. Now it makes it a very easy commute off the island to go see pristine waterfalls, Mayan ruins, zip line, cave tubing. And so Placencia for me offered a full package of Nice beaches, great fly fishing, great diving, and all those jungle activities and inland activities I just mentioned. Yeah, there are good paved roads to and from Placencia, for example, to and from the Placencia town site and the Placencia airport. It's about a three-hour drive on a paved road to Belize City. Oftentimes, you make a flight out of Belize City, but there are still a number of roads at and near the Placencia town site that are dirt roads, and it's just kind of an indicator as to how underdeveloped the Placencia town site is. You have these pastel-colored houses and You have a real estate law there that limits the growth of large buildings, so there really only can be low-rise structures there, and that makes things very appealing because palm trees are greater than the height of the structures. And, you know, the interesting thing is you have zero international chain restaurants or hotels there in that area. In fact, there is not one Starbucks coffee shop in the entire nation, just to give you an idea of how underdeveloped it is and how much growth potential that it has. So we've got Placencia there on the peninsula, and then next to Placencia are numerous keys, which is a Belizean name for island. So just tell us more about the character and the size of the keys that are just off Placencia, David. 
Well, literally, if you look out from one of our beach houses, you'll see, I would call it hundreds of dots and smaller islands uh, that kind of litter the area offshore there. And so basically in Placencia, the reef is uh, farther out than it is as you go farther north. So it's almost an 18 mile distance from the barrier reef to the shoreline of the peninsula. For diving, it's, it's obviously farther to go, but it's better visibility. You have no runoff. You know, the rivers don't affect it with dirty water and stuff like that. So in between that reef and the mainland, there's all these keys. And so, again, hundreds of them, you know, some of them are just pristine postcard sort of, you know, coral ringed uh, islands. Over the last three years, really, we started out on the mainland doing beach houses. And I guess I thought that was too easy. And so at some point we decided to buy an (laughs) island that was (laughs) close to town and we developed that. And that was Little Harvest Key. and so. From there, we said, okay, well, that was too easy. So we found an island that was the farthest island out, 20 miles out, called Gladden Key, which has been a huge success, a lot of press. And we built the world's most private island 20 miles offshore on a pristine coral setting, literally less than a mile from the Barrier Reef. You can see the water breaking like a white line out the front door. And so, you know, where we saw is that the islands are certainly an enchanting sort of opportunity down there. Obviously, it's it's much harder to develop something on an island than it is the mainland. But when you get out there, it's it's just like being in paradise. It really is like paradise. And we're talking about islands now featured on HGTV Island Hunters, which Gladden Key that you mentioned was. Some of the keys, like Placencia Key, are as close as, gosh, just a couple hundred yards off the main town site on the mainland there in Placencia. It's like you do need a boat to get over there, but just barely. And I really like the water there. Like, I've traveled extensively in both Hawaii and the Caribbean, and the water there in Belize is warmer than it is in much of Hawaii, and let alone the fact that Belize is closer to most of the United States than Hawaii is, and it's less expensive. It's kind of like you have the ability to buy at prices like you would have in Hawaii back in 1950, before Hawaii had its big real estate run-up. So a lot of these islands do have boat access. That's how you're going to be getting to them from the mainland in Placencia. Just tell us a bit more about the sizes of the islands. Well, the islands typically range from, I would say, 10 acres would be a larger one down to an acre. And you know, there are various features. Some of them are very heavily mangrove and would require a lot of fill. Others are hard coraled. But all of them, again, have an abundancy of wildlife. Most of them have, you know, house coral reefs that are right there on their front doorstep. And you're right. I mean, the water is definitely warm and the prices are much more realistic than Hawaii is certainly today and really for the last 15, 20 years, for sure. Yeah, even in February, the water is warm. So, Well, now that we know more about these small private islands, just tell us what it's like to to do the site work on them and the construction detail and the structure amenities that you have there on the island as you are, you know, living the dream and having ownership or partial ownership of these island properties. Well, that's a great question. And like I said, we started with Little Harvest because it was close and we were smart to do that because being close does make it a lot easier you can forget some screws and or nails and get in the boat and be back in town in one minute and have them back out there in, you know, 10 minutes. Whereas at Gladden, if you forgot some nails, you know, you wasted a whole day because it's literally a 20 mile trip each way. And weather can certainly play a role when you get out, you know, toward Gladden and offshore that far. But all of our construction, whether it be 20 miles offshore or on the mainland is 100 percent concrete construction built for withstanding hurricanes and you know, the damp, humid environment. We don't have any sheetrock that could get wet and mold. Everything's designed for low maintenance so that our rental program can actually make money and not be spending it all on painting wood and replacing wood and termites and things like that. And so we've developed over the last 10 years a very good model of what works for rental, what works for our owners, and we've combined the two to make it a, a very successful package, whether it be on the island in a condo, in a house on the mainland, or even in a property in the jungle like we're getting ready to start on. Yeah, and I can see that quality and that craftsmanship when I'm on the ground myself there. You have large windows. 
you pay attention to which direction structures and views are going to face, and all of your work there conforms to U.S. building and safety standards. Well, it does, if not, you know, international IBC. Now, you have opportunities for investors and owners both on the mainland and then offshore on the Keys. Tell us about utilities in both types. On the mainland, it's just like you would find here. We're all, everything's on grid power. We have city water for the most part, all the mainland properties, internet, cable TV, everything. You know, for example, Gladden, obviously there's no electricity from the grid. So we have a massive, very sophisticated battery backed up solar system with, you know, a generator backup, desalination plant and rainwater collection for water. And we actually do have internet on a point of sight tower, uh, very good internet out there and satellite TV. So it just depends on where you're at. But, you know, the internet's come a long way in the last four years in Belize. It's getting very close to what I have here at my office in, in Texas most days down there. Now, you probably do find higher electricity prices and gasoline prices there than you do in some other parts of the world. So that's just one thing to be aware of. And now you really do have a number of different ownership opportunities there. And, you know, interestingly, David, a lot of investors, they think about buying a property either for cash flow or buying a property for lifestyle, but not very often that one property can serve both purposes. But you have a number of different ownership opportunities from condos on the mainland to owning your own island or part of your own island out in the key. So just tell us a little bit about the ownership opportunities there. Yeah, Keith, over the last really 10 years, we've developed a very sophisticated and vetted ownership structure where it gives our owners, whether they're wanting to buy a one bedroom beach condo or a quarter of a you know $5 million island, a very well managed property that they can come use it a little bit and make money at the end of the year, not write a check. The maintenance is taken care of. You know, they're fully staffed. Our management team manage the staff, manage the rental process. Really, it's a full turnkey system that gives the owners the flexibility to use it as much or as little as they want. Obviously, if they use it all the time, there's not any rental income to be had, but it's still much, much lower uh, cost to them based on the way the uh, rest of the rental income does work and how the bills are paid for those properties. That's the trade-off there for the owner-investor. If they want to use the vacation property more for themselves and their family, well, then they'll get less income. But if they want to use it less, then they can get more income because there are that many more weeks when they can have it rented out to others. And when it's rented out to others, all the marketing and the management is completely turnkey for that owner in a lot of these models. So we're talking about you have an on-site property manager, a concierge service, a groundskeeper, a housekeeper, a chef. Just tell us a bit more about that turnkey management for the investor owner, because that's so important. We want the owners to come down and be on vacation, not fixing toilets and you know, changing electrical switches and things like that. We want to be a vacation. And so when they come down, the house is, is in pristine condition. All the properties, for the most part, come with a golf cart, a vehicle for the owners to use. All those are maintained, gassed up. You know, it's not work. It's a, something you want to come to, not something you feel like you uh, need to come to. The owners have been very happy over the last 10 years. They're really kind of my best salespeople. I frequently just tell somebody to pick a list of the 100 owners and call two. I don't care which two, just tell me which two and I'll give you their information. And that's how we built our business. I think that's the difference. It's built for the long term, not for the short term. And the owners truly do own their their houses and properties and we're just managing it to a very high level and to a very high, a high level of satisfaction. Yeah, and I was the beneficiary of some of that management, having everything cleaned up after me and having all my meals cooked for me while I stayed there in one of the places really was quite terrific. And, you know, David, there's just really this buzz I felt when I'm in the town of Placencia that it is such an up and coming place. There was even one particular day when I was in a restaurant and a group of about eight men were all sitting around. And they mentioned Colorado a lot. I think most of them were from Colorado and they were just all scheming about how they were going to to best develop Placencia Belize and all the keys there. It just has so many indicators, both anecdotally and statistically, that it is such an up-and-coming place. 
I've been there for so long, you get a little bit numb to what you see, but it's very apparent over the last four years, especially just driving down the street and you can just see things are developing and a new restaurant here. Just last time I was down there last week, they were right in the midst of completely repaving and redoing the road from the airstrip all the way down to the waterfront. So, yeah, that's a pretty big project for Belize. And so you see the signs, the government's investing in it. It's certainly the number two in numbers tourist spot, you know, and it's certainly the fastest growing in Belize by far. Yeah, you know, it's really just hard to believe that so much of that area is still largely undeveloped. We're talking about a dreamy place here with Vision Properties. David Keener, more when we come back. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. For an income property investor like you that needs an income property loan, go to Ridge Lending Group. And over the years, you've heard owner Chaley Ridge generously give her time to you right here on the show as a guest. Ridge provides investment property loans in almost every U.S. state, and you're going to find out how they've helped more Americans realize their dreams of financial freedom through real estate than any other mortgage lender in the entire nation when you get started at RidgeLendingGroup.com. MC Lobsher is the host of the top-rated business and investing podcast, Cashflow Ninja, and also the president of Producers Wealth. Producers Wealth assists people in creating, protecting, and perpetually multiplying wealth in any economy through creating processes that help them increase their production, provide them with liquidity, passive income generators, and opportunities for enormous growth. Learn more about their time-tested and proven systems at yourownbankingsystem.com. Hi, this is Rich Dad Advisor Garrett Sutton. You're listening to the always valuable Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold. Don't quit your daydream. Welcome back to Get Rich Education. We're having a dreamy conversation because I'm talking with Vision Properties' David Keener about buying Belizean Islands or buying property in Beachy and -and up-and-coming Placencia, Belize in Central America. David, just tell us some more about just the safety and security of that area overall, because you've been visiting there for 17 years now. Well, Keith, I've had the fortune to be able to travel really much all through the Caribbean and in most of the world. And one thing that I'm still to this day is very happy to say is that when I'm in Placencia, I truly do feel safe when I'm in the village down there. I don't have to look over my shoulder. I don't have to worry about people trying to hustle me to sell me you know, trinkets or some sort of scam thing. And it's been that way since the first time I've got there. And it really hasn't changed even, you know, as the peninsula has developed more. The Belizean people are, as a rule, very friendly, very friendly to Americans, not put upon that you're in their country. You know, I've traveled to other, what I would say maybe is over tourist destinations and just did not get that feeling. There's not a separate pricing on the grocery store for, you know, beer for Americans is two dollars <laughs> and beer for locals is one dollar. There's none of that sort of right. sort of junk. And so it's a very refreshing thing. It's something that I saw very clearly the first time I was there and see to this day very clearly every time I'm there. I know everybody in the village obviously by now. There are many local friends from fishing guides on to the bank manager and everything. And so it's really is a very interesting mix in Placencia and Maya Beach, the peninsula there of locals, expats, and kind of a good example of people kind of just, you know, getting along and making a proper community. Yeah. Any person that asks about the safety and security there, which is a fair question, but if they ask that question, they've never been there because once they've been there, they don't really ask or think about it anymore. I felt safe even late at night. I didn't even run into one panhandler in the entire Placencia area. And yeah, there really are increasingly a lot of expats, you know, just increasingly a lot more people like us, as well as the friendly Belizean natives. So David, just talk to us more. If someone wants to get started, what would it take for a minimum investment there? And I know you have so many property types, but just speak to that. Well, Keith, we, you know, really $50,000 is what I would say is a minimum investment to come on to be maybe a fractional owner in one of our properties up to, you know, $4 million if you want your own private island that's fully furnished. 
you know, and all points in between. And so that's what we do have as a complete offering from fractional properties that are well managed that produce income that give the owners a chance to use it to full ownership condos on the beach, lots if you want something just for appreciation that you can then build your dream home when you're ready to retire, lots on waterfront, lots up in the mountains, on the jungle, at, you know, at a sharper price point for, you know, to spend less and still have a beautiful place up in the rainforest and close to the beach. So we've tried to really expand our offering over the last two years to truly have something for everyone. And I think we've, you know, done a pretty good job of looking at what the market is and finding solutions to solve it. Yeah, we're talking about British common law property ownership. That's just much like how you have high property ownership rights in the United States. You can have parcels individually titled to you there in Belize. Yes, there is no 99-year lease like in Mexico, for example. There is no local rights like in even Costa Rica and other places. So it's very clean. It's all done by British trained attorneys. You can get title insurance if you want to get title insurance, or you can just have the attorneys do a, a proper opinion. Now, what about an exit strategy down the road for when it does become time to sell years and years in the future? Well, obviously, the exit strategies would somewhat be dependent upon what you're looking for and very much depending upon what you would actually purchase. So, for example, if you purchase one of our fractions, we would certainly help you remarket that. We offer a trade-in program. So if you want to trade in a fraction and build your own full-time house, we take, you know, take that in as trade. With condos and lots and full ownership homes, you know, it's just like it would be here. You can list it with us. You can list it with a realtor. You can sell it yourself. It's just like you would have here in the States as far as exiting a real estate investment. Well, I want to tell listeners about the tour, but before I do, is there any last thing that I should have asked you about but didn't? The best way is to come down and see for yourself and let us give you a proper local insider's uh, view of Placencia and what it really is. Yes, you offer prospective investor tours, whether someone currently owns there or whether they're just thinking about taking a look around and seeing what types of properties you offer. These can be properties for lifestyle or properties for cash flow or really many properties where you have a model set up where everything is turnkey managed for you and you can use it for both lifestyle a few weeks a year and have it rented out where you do the marketing and the management the rest of the year. Really, the best way is to get down there and see Placencia Belize and the surrounding keys like I have. And they have these tours that are four days and three nights long where you arrive on a Friday evening and then you depart Monday anytime. It's just a great place to have a vacation, even if you decide you didn't want to purchase anything, but it's really worth taking a look at. Just tell us a bit more about these four-day, three-night tours, David. Well, Keith, we've been doing this for a while now. We do one a month. Myself or one of the other owners is for sure there. Obviously, we have our uh, team down there that will always be there to you know, meet you at the airport, take you to dinner. You know, It's no pressure. We don't give it away for free for a reason. You know, I want people to come down. We give a very good price, basically, at our cost. Come down, meet us, see what we got going on, see what Placencia has going on. And so, really, you, you come in on a Friday night. Saturday, we have a quick tour. We go and show you the beach houses. We take you over to our new island. The Enclave is on the tour. It'll be finished in June. We go show you one of the other islands we've done. We show you our condo project. And then we more importantly show you the village. And then day two, we take you out on on my boat. We go through the Keys and everybody has a good time. Put a few beers in the cooler, do a little fishing, go a little snorkeling, do a little island hop, stop at an island bar that's owned by a friend of mine uh, nine miles off and just make a day of that and then come back, have dinner. People can ask us any questions. You know, the next day, maybe people leave. So it's very low key. It's no pressure. It's really just more of an education tour. And if you see something you like, we fill you in the details and see where it goes. At some point, you as an investor that's concerned with return on investment, at some point you have to ask yourself, what's my return on life? (laughs) With all this real estate investing that I'm doing, 
how much benefit am I actually getting out of it and being able to give back to my family with this real estate? But oftentimes you can produce cash flow with these investments with the way that they have it set up. But yeah, you really have to get there and see it on one of these tours. And it's not salesy. It's an educational tour. If you see something you're interested in, you can follow up with the provider yourself. And these tours held monthly, like David said, there is going to be one as soon as later this month here in April in just a few weeks. There's one in May. There's one in June. And there is a tour in July, July 20th to 23rd, the Belize Investor Tour. I am going to be there myself so you can meet me and come hang out with me on this tour if you choose to go on the July 20th to 23rd one, which I sure hope you do. And you're unveiling something pretty special on that July 20th to 23rd tour. David, tell us about that. Well, we're unveiling two things, really, is the Enclave Private Island on Placentia Key will be 100% completed. Actually, one of our owners is staying out there those days and has invited us to bring whoever we wanted to to come out and have lunch and actually with them, meet him, talk to them, and give a proper tour of the completed island. So that's exciting because it'll be done just a few weeks before that. And the other thing we have that will be open by then is our new jungle track up on the Hummingbird Highway. The roads will be completed, and we're going to take people up there to, you know, go for a swim in the river and go maybe do zip lining and, and then walk around and check out the lots and the uh, resort site that's going to be happening up there on that property on the Hummingbird Highway. So both very exciting, and I'm looking forward to it for sure. So that is July 20th to 23rd, and the cost for these investor tours is so affordable. It's not several thousand dollars. In fact, the cost of the tour to you is $1,295. However, for Get Rich Education followers, only for you at GetRichEducation.com slash Belize, when you indicate your interest right there on our page, you can go on the tour for just $995. And tell us what all that includes, David. So, Keith, for $995, then your listeners would, for a couple, get everything included once they land at the Belize City Airport. So local flights from Belize City down to Placentia, we pick you up in uh, our Mercedes uh, van, take you over. On this tour, we're going to be staying at our brand new, it's called Brisa Oceana Condominium Project. It's right on the beach, right in the center of Placentia Village. I've been inside that, too, yes. Beautifully done, brand new. You don't even need a golf cart. You can walk anywhere you want to go. It includes all your meals. It includes the uh, boat trip tour that we talked about. It includes a trip to the waterfall. And my presence is for free. <laughs> well, that's the best value of all. Well, David, I've really got to thank you for offering that discount to our listeners. Nine ninety five for a couple for four days and three nights for all of that. It's offered each month. But I'd really like you to come to the one, again, July 20th through 23rd. Go ahead and check out GetRichEducation.com slash Belize for all the details. I often say, don't quit your daydream. Well, you can perhaps live your daydream in Placencia, Belize. So this is one you really need to come see. I really encourage you to come down there and hang out with David and I. David Keener, thanks so much for coming on to Get Rich Education. Keith, enjoyed it, and thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, it's great to have a development icon like David on the show here. I really have not seen one fluffy pro forma on his properties when he has such a proven track record like he does. The proximity to the mainland recreation is just so good in Placentia there. I took a cave tubing trip while I was based there. And yes, that is what it sounds like. Floating on an inner tube on a clean stream that runs through a cave with a guide while wearing a headlamp, and at one point I could look up and see through this natural opening 300 feet above me, up above the cave ceiling, and see the Belizean jungle up there while I was in the dark down below. Gosh, just fantastic. Now, a bit closer to town, Placentia, I took a 25-minute drive to a waterfall in the Belizean jungle. It was about a 100-foot waterfall. In fact, I sent you Get Rich Education newsletter subscribers, a photo of me diving off that very waterfall. But here's the thing. There was virtually nobody there on a great day in a beautiful place. I had to wait for someone to show up just to take that photo of me. So 
not only are these places unspoiled, they're still largely uninhabited. When I wanted to tag the name of the waterfall, I couldn't even find a place name for it. That's how undeveloped it is. But it's really Placencia's topography and geography that lends itself to the beach and coastal development that is probably better known for. When you have a peninsula like that with beaches on both sides, and then the peninsula parallels the mainland coastline yet, well, now you have three coastlines where most places on the map only have one. So it's really a remarkable confluence of circumstances that make the place special. In Placencia town proper, there's a pedestrian boardwalk where you have restaurants, some little commercial buildings and some residences, and there's a real sense of clean beach community that you have there. There are condos available right there in that area, and that's actually one of the more affordable options for you, in fact. There are expats all over the place, and they're telling their friends about it, and the word is really getting out. And then, of course, you have the islands, the Keys. Many of them are just a few acres in size, some of them even smaller. Now, when you're on some of the islands, you can see the mainland and other islands, but yet there are keys that are further out in the Caribbean, where from them, you can only see open ocean and you really get that feeling of seclusion. Really, all the boxes are checked here. You, the market, the team, and the property, and just some enormous growth on top of that. That's very kind of David for GRE listeners here, $995 for a couple for the complete tour and you're taken care of from Belize City onward. Oh, and if you did buy property, David said that he would even put that $995 toward your purchase. You know, I think the worst thing that could happen to you is that you have a really nice vacation. You are going to feel like you're on an episode of HGTV's Island Hunters yourself. There's only a maximum of 20 people that can be accommodated on that tour. We prefer that you get started one last time at getricheducation.com slash Belize. You've listened to me all these years, so let's meet. David and I really look forward to meeting you in person there July 20th to 23rd. But of course, you won't be there for me. You'll be there for you. In this life of yours, you know what? You can't make any more time, but there is actually something that you can do about that. You can make the most of the time that you do have. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Don't quit your daydream. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. If you want to retire in five years or less through real estate investing, then pay close attention as I'm about to share my proven recipe with you. This is Brad Sumrock, and I've taught thousands of people just like you how to replace their incomes, quit their jobs, or simply have more income and freedom than they ever thought possible. And we do this by investing in apartment buildings. After starting with no experience, I managed to pocket over a million dollars in cash and retire from my 17-year corporate job after only three years of apartment investing and I have hundreds of successful students that have had similar results. If you want to get out of the rat race or simply have more income and freedom in your life, then investing in apartment buildings might be the answer for you. Visit our website at bradsumrock.com to get more information about our upcoming training events. That's B-R-A-D-S-U-M-R-O-K dot com. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.